How's it going YouTube? Fox back again. Uh, in this episode we are going to be talking about uh, Isotope Nectar 2 and how you can use it to process some old school sort of drum breaks. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I did just that in the track that I've just finished. Uh, this was a remix that I did for Wavo. This one was the first one I've done I believe at this point I've uploaded all four parts so there'll be a link in the description to part one if you want to go back and watch how I made this whole track. Uh, yeah, please subscribe if you enjoy this or any of the tutorials. Ozotope Nectar 2, we're going to talk a little bit about what it is when we get to it. Um, play a little bit of the section. This is the break processed as it stands. You can hear the chorus going on. You can hear it's got a bit of reverb, a bit of room. I've used a bit of gate, saturation, the compressor. Yeah, a lot of the tools that are inside Nectar to make this stand out. Um, if I just turn Nectar off, you're going to hear the difference drastically. So, with it on. And off. It's got a lot more presence. It's got its own space and it made it a lot more powerful, which I wanted, wanted it to do. Uh, to mix well with the other drums. I'll play it in context of the track. It's not so audible in the whole track as you would imagine. The bass is quite prominent. Solo the drums so you can hear it mix with the rest of the drums in the group. And again, if I turn it off, I really wanted it to stand out in the drums. There are parts in the track where the drums are pretty much soloed, like this. This is the main reason I put Nectar on it for this sort of fil uh, filtered out bit where we're sort of breaking the track down, getting it ready for another one to come mixed into it. So turn it back on. As you can see, uh, really, really good. Adds a lot more presence to the reverb, puts it in, in its own space, in its own little box and makes it stand out within the drums. So for now we're just going to solo the track. Um, I've got a new instance of Nectar 2 here so I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I did. So the first thing I did was the gate function. This allows you to make the transients stand out, give it more punch. Um, that's exactly what I used it for. I mean, I didn't slam it. Um, I kept the attack release and the ratio on exactly how it comes, I kept it on peak. All I did was push the threshold up until it bites and you can see the gain reduction or the sort of sharpening of the transients in this display at the top here. As you push it, you can really crank it so it just picks out the attacks of the transients and does away with any of the sustain. Boosted the gain ever so slightly, 1.4 dB. So yeah, I'll AB it again so you can hear the effect this is having. It's a really, really useful tool for processing these old school breaks. A lot of them are ripped from, uh, like I say, old school tracks where the mixing wasn't so perfect. There can be a lot of noise, a lot of sounds tailing off. This is like a transient shaper in effect, this gate. So the more you push it, the crispy you can make it. You can have a real fast attack and a real fast release. So I had a 10 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release. 
it's quite an organic feel to the sound then so yeah that's all i did with the gate literally turned it on pushed the threshold down until it just cleared up a bit of that hissing in the brake we'll turn the gate off for now so we can hear all the individual parts that i do uh on their own the next one i did was harmony this is a very very cool little plug-in i don't know whether i did too much here or not i think i just yeah you can just add a bit of extra stereo width in this pan and gain section so as it comes as standard you can hear it there just pushing it wide it's already giving it a sort of reverby feel in the pitch and delay section i did nothing um it's automatically on by standard You don't want to be pushing that too far it starts to get a grainy sort of feel so yeah that is it i didn't change anything else at all i literally just turned it on i didn't do anything in the variation section or the time or the amount or the pitch correction and um, the brake wasn't such a bad quality really it wasn't that bad that i needed to do anything drastic put it that way i just used this at pan and gain section to push it out a little bit wider so with the gate a B it all red ready gives it a bit of stereo feel stacks to so that's to give it a lot more presence in the mix so saturation was the next section um, what did I do for this I kept it on tape I pulled the mix down ever so slightly and just increased the amount obviously 100% you're gonna slam it too much main reason I did the saturation was to mix nicely with a reverb later on um, it's quite hard to hear on its own even with the mix on full uh, I say it did blend with some of the other effects that I used later on next the EQ um, I did a low cut you can change it a high pass resonant you can boost the Q or lower the Q with your mod wheel. I had it on 59 hertz, 5960. Made it quite flat. And then I'll just boost this section with number four around 500 hertz. Again, quite subtle, just sort of increasing the volume of the snare. Just a little under 2 dBs again there. Again, it just helped bring the snare out because I did pick the snare out and use this snare as the snare in the track. I mixed it with another one. So, yeah, the EQ is just cutting away any of the mud at lower than 50 hertz. The subby part, not... There was a fair bit there, as you can see. And then just boosting those frequencies. Then the compressors. Um, I had a ratio of one over six to one, so not a really heavy ratio. Twenty-three milliseconds, a very fast release. Um, I had it on peak, quite hard. Yeah, I had it in the parallel mode. So A, B, the compressor. This compressor mixed with the harmony and the gate and the saturation starts to bring it all together and let's make it sound a little bit more tight. So without the compressor. Too much, any more than... Uh, any more than sort of eight or nine, I started to lose the punch of the, of the snare. So I say 8.5, 8.6, something like that I had. Real basic compression. Um, you can move these modules around. I probably should have had the compressor at the end. Uh, but for now, I had it after the EQ. 
Uh, we'll try it at the end of the stack just in case it adds a little something that I didn't already have. There's always a chance to learn. Uh, the effects section, this is very cool. You've got a distortion module. Um, it's just a basic overdrive where you can choose to decimate it, which I did not do. Um, all I did was just a tiny little bit of... You can see, you, re you can really slam it. I had just 2.5% uh, of drive or the distortion send if you like you don't have to use these you can just use one or the other I didn't use the repeat uh, the global I just kept as it was I just had it 100% dry and 100% wet then you can control individual module with this send knob what I did use what you can hear is quite prominent in the sound is the chorus um, I just turned the depth down to 19 feedback on 50 and then I pushed the mix until it sounded how I wanted it I wanted it to make with a slow depth, a really slow depth, it can almost sound like a phaser. So with and without the effects. Again, it's all about giving it more space, giving it its own space, and making it sound more prominent in the mix. A chorus on a drum loop can really, really do that. And um, the final last and final effect I used was the reverb this helps glue everything together um, yeah what can I say putting reverb on drum brakes is something I do quite a lot sometimes I'll do it on a send um, within the channel sometimes I'll drop it straight on it but so this nectar has everything you need to do it out of the box reverb after the chorus I had 1.3 seconds of decay, the width, I turned it down a little bit because the chorus and the uh, harmony was already making it quite wide. Let's try the compressor at the end now. does sound better at the end it just keeps the reverb in check a little bit yeah that's it i mean it's quite a basic chain really the gate is doing most of the work in sort of creating the overall roundness of the sound before you start applying these effects the harmony added the extra width a tiny bit of saturation mixed with the reverb and the chorus later on just helps give everything a, a warmer feel if you like um, a bit of edge to it the chorus is really probably what makes the patch so without the chorus, bring it in slowly. Uh, you see what happens if I introduce more depth. Feedback gives it that real metally twang. depth just promenades sort of like the wobbles or the pops if you like that the reverb is bringing that the uh, chorus brings out on the snare and that so say so you can fine tune these to choose every break's going to need processing differently um i probably should have worded this a bit better it, processing this break with nectar 2 is what i should have said because uh, every break's going to require a different set of settings but yeah this is what i did this is what i uh, use for this track so yeah, I hope you learned something. If you're thinking of getting Nectar 2, I've got this in an upgrade. I originally had Ozotope Ozone 7 over Christmas. They were doing a deal where you could get a load of their stuff for an extra 200 bucks or something like that, which I did, and I got a load of cool stuff. I got Trash 2, I got RX5, uh, Nectar 2, Neutron, their new channel strip, um, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, Nectar 2, I found this very, very useful for processing drum breaks. So yeah, hope you learned something. As always, stay tuned for more. Please subscribe. Thanks a lot. Cheers.